In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Today is the first bridegroom service. We make commemoration of Joseph the All-Comely, as you just heard in the Synaxarian. He is another type of Christ. And if you're, going, if you're paying attention, you'll notice that during the services, as I mentioned a few days ago, there are many parallels with us. Christ's passion and our passions. And Christ, by Christ's passion, we are healed of the passions as we chant in the hymnology of the Church. But particularly, we have to make these connections. It's very important for us because we're missing the majority of Great Lent if we don't, if we don't understand this. Joseph <coughs> was sold by his brethren. Joseph was put into a, dig, a, a big pit. And that Christ ourself was Christ, our, our own Lord, was put into the tomb, and he went deep into the pit of Hades to release the souls of those who were held in bondage. And Joseph was sold into Egypt, and we also were sold into sin. Egypt, according to the teachings of the Holy Fathers, signifies the land of the passions, and Israel signifies the promised land. And Joseph was the ruler of Egypt, that, he, that is, he was the ruler of his passions. And he shows us that by doing the right thing, by patiently enduring the challenges which face us, we end up becoming rulers. He was a slave and he became a ruler. And he had these challenges in front of him, and there were many of them. But finally he was he had this big temptation with a woman, the Egyptian woman. <laughs> but he was glorified, and that's what happens to all the Christians. Joseph is a type of Christ, but he's also a type of the Christians who follow Christ, since we are all made in his image, and we are working towards achieving his likeness. We look towards the great Joseph today, and every day of this week, we pay close attention so that we can learn the lessons, the canon as well, of Matin service, of this bridegroom service, teaches us a number of things concerning our own passions. I want to finally just point out that we've been hearing this whole great Lent prayer of Saint Ephraim the Syrian. And the last words of the prayer of Saint Ephraim the Syrian are, help me to see my own failings and not to condemn my brother. Because for a Christian to really grow, he needs to be able to see his own failings. Because the Christian is not a person who lives in some type of fantasy land, he lives in reality. So he has to face the reality of who he is, what kind of weaknesses he has so that he can work on them, so that he can become a new man in Christ. And the Christian understands that there's no way he's going to get out of the situation that he's in without Christ. But why is the prayer worded in this way? Why, is it, why does it say, help me to see my own failings and not to condemn my brother? And the reason for this is because you can't see your own failings if you're looking at the failings of your brother. There's the formula right there for all of us to question ourselves whether or not we are in delusion. Because many people see or see the failings or whether real or imaginary because a lot of times it's imaginary a lot of times it's just the temptation of the devil and that's how they don't see their own failings a lot of people spend an entire life talking about other people's failings or just other people in general and there's your indication that you haven't been able to see yourself carefully and clearly and if you can't see yourself then you're not going to be able to see Christ who is in you that's it in a nutshell, beloved Orthodox Christians, and we have to be able to, to understand. I, I can't preach to you another gospel. Don't expect another gospel. This is the teaching of the church. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ, and these are the things which we have to face. And our old man doesn't, doesn't like them, but this is the way it is. So now, especially during this week, let's pay close attention to ourselves so that we're able to see our own failings, so that we can fix them, so that we can give God some room in us, so that God can take over. 
And our Lord is extremely loving and extremely merciful. It's just a question of us doing the right thing. Let us ask our Savior then to help us to see our own failings and not to give them our, our brother. Just as the Joseph, the, the, the great Joseph, the all comely did, literally, to his many brethren, he returned good for evil. But God returned a hundredfold, a thousandfold, thousands fold back to Joseph, not only the kingdom here and not only becoming a ruler over his passions, but now he in paradise rejoices eternally with Jesus Christ, our Lord, whom he foreshadowed, whom he was a type of. May our Lord deem us worthy to see his bridal chamber, and may we all be worthy to receive light from the light giver. That's what we ask for. Illumine the garment of my soul, O light giver, and save me. We're going to pray that shortly. May God bless all of us during this blessed, holy, great week. May God give you all patience. And may God give you understanding so that you don't lose the blessings because when the devil sees that we're trying to do the right thing, he works with all his force against us so that we don't. So here we are, we're trying to see our own failings, but then the evil one comes and he's going to whisper the messages so that we don't see our failings. So that temptation will be there. And that is the reality. And one may ask, well, how are we ever going to be able to deal with the situation? In Christ Jesus only. And that's what the Lord wants us to say. He wants us to understand that we can only do things in Christ Jesus. And then that's exactly the time when he makes us like Christ Jesus. That's when we become Christ-like. So please be careful especially during this week, because there's a lot of grace and the evil demon will try to take away, the demons will try to take away from us all the good things which are in front of us. May the light of Jesus Christ, of the bridegroom of the church, shine upon all of us. May we all be deemed worthy to worship our Savior as faithful servants in this life and the age to come. Amen.